be talking about some of those very interesting rogue challengers that the OCG has been starting to deal with. Make sure you guys smash the little crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out more on this content. Now you might have seen our little tier list over here. Um, we're going to be looking at B tier down for this video. So we have Dalston with the Fiendsmith. Now this is basically just kind of, oh, what was it, like the Cybers pile developments that were kind of starting to show up over the past week in the OCG. Definitely is interesting. I want to see more of this develop, though. Uh, Infernoid has also been a very, very interesting meta challenger. They still have grass. looks greener over there. I'm not all that surprised about that. We still do have the power of Novox and friends. I'm very surprised to see that they put Ritual so far down, but when the Fiendsmith package is just truly in years you know, ahead of everybody else, I understand that. Memento also sitting here in the B tier is very interesting to me. I think the way that, you know, Memento is kind of structured at the moment, it is a very high ceiling deck. And I, a lot of people don't know how to handle that. Down in the C tier, we have Whitewood Horus. Trust me when I say this. I personally think Whitewood Horus with the Toy Soldier stuff is a very threatening deck. I also don't think a lot of people know how to handle that. We also have Gimmick Puppets down here. Um, that deck will steal games all day long. We also have Unchained Ubel, Fiend Box, Labyrinth. Oh gosh, that'd be a, that's an interesting one. We also have down here in D tier, we have Chimera, Fiendsmith. Oh, well, I mean, okay, Illusion Good Stuff, effectively. Magical Musketeer, Fiendsmith. Makes sense. I wouldn't necessarily consider that a super low D tier deck. Runic Stun still gets tops, but they have it down here in D tier. Um, Runic Stun's been doing pretty well outside of Japan in the other OCG regions. And we have Drytron down in the lower tier down here as well. So, okay, you've got a lot of very strong challengers for the course of the meta here. But what are we looking at in terms of lists? So starting up over here is going to be your innovation that has been referred to as the the Cyphers pile. Now, we don't have Lingaribo, and which is a real big shame because I think Lingaribo is one of those cards that kind of makes this pile of cards go round at the end of the day. You gotta remember, you want as much ingenuity as you can actually produce in terms of the meta. And I do think that this this deck kind of checks all of those marks. Once again, the Fiendsmith package is so stupidly powerful for what it gives to these decks, for its extension capabilities, for the ability to produce these free tokens. It's, it's going to leave a giant mark on people's backs just because of, you know, how much this package can bring to the game. And this is just Cyber's good pile climbing up and fully abusing it. Yay! I love this game some days. Um, next up here, we have Infernoid. Now, unfortunately, the TCG won't really get to experience this deck in its, what I'm going to say, full glory. Because, you know, they have triple reasoning, triple monster gate. You can thrust into all of that. You can toggle on in to all the grass looks greeners that you could ever actually want. And they also get the chance to play Dark Fusion in this deck as well. That's right, you heard me say that correctly. This deck gets to take advantage of Dark Fusion because you want your level one fusion monster that you know requires two Infernoids to make it. You need that card to be able to go off. And basically you get targeting protection off of the Dark Fusion as a little splash card for the deck. I think it's important to understand when you're looking at you know this deck, yeah, we can adapt some of these tricks, but you're going to be playing a 40 card version in the TCG. You're not going to be able to sack super hard. I mean, you can probably push for 50, depending on how much you want to try to splash in in terms of your packages, but you're not going to get to the level of this. Next up is our Saravis and Friends, aka Novox Turbo, and I'm going to be honest with you, how figured out that this deck will be if you if you picked up voiceless voice cards and you're like all right so i just get to go ahead and play the deck essentially the way it is and the current tcg meta and transition on over to the ocg yeah easy peasy that's all you really care about you you wanted when you typically look at an investment in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, just having a deck that you can pick up once and then just carry over on into another format and keep on doing this that's pretty good. Um, also, you know, you can also splash in Ostionado and things like that into this deck. 
The way that this is pretty much set up in the OCG, though, very, very similar to the current TCG builds. Not really much of an argument for that. Maybe the pendulum graph, but they're choosing to cite it. I perfectly understand that. All right, pendulum graph can be hit or miss some days. Now, Memento. This is this is an interesting take on the build because the build is playing things like the Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries. I don't really think that you need that. Um, I think some of the things that you should be looking at in terms of this deck are, you know, the Pot of Extravagance, which is kind of hilarious, actually. Um, also, this build isn't even playing the new, crazy, turbo-powered Chunga's boss monster. You know, the, the monster that just smashes down, you know, that, that big fusion monster that mills the, the three from the deck. The fact that you are not even taking advantage of that card in this build it is so insanely crazy to me. Um, I do think that Memento is going to, with that card, I, I've seen some plays with the deck. Um, I will say that the ceiling is incredibly insane. But if this deck actually does get the chance to go, it, it looks pretty insane. Now, we have a good showcase over here of kind of what the Whitewoods pile looks like. Um, this build does not showcase any of the toy soldier cards that we've been starting to see in terms of the development side of the meta. I will say, though, those toy soldier cards with the toy box, getting those free bodies on the field for you to kind of use as stepping stones along the way is very, very solid. I like that a lot. I think that that deck has some of the coolest extension capabilities. Also, I mean, being able to use the Hora stuff here to toggle into the higher level synchros is a good idea. I like that. Crimson Dragon is a heck of a card for a deck like this, especially, you know, if you imagine if you had King Calamity, that you'd be able to do this. something that the TCG will actually have at their disposal. But I do think that having those toy soldier, the toy box stuff for this deck makes all of the difference. Now, we have a gimmick puppet list for you here. Now remember, the whole point behind the Gimmick Puppet deck is you're going to attempt to burn your opponent out. That's why you'll see a lot of these builds, basically, I mean, this has been dubbed the FTK killer. You go first and you attempt to play the game. Though, interestingly enough for this build, this build actually opted to play evenly matched, of all things. I don't know how I feel about that. That wasn't on my bingo sheet. I guess that's in case, you know, the deck needs to go second, and then you can just kill your opponent on main phase too, because, you know, you can actually do that. It's actually kind of insane to think about out here, that, you know, gimmick puppets can just do all this stuff evenly you, and then go, all right, so I've cleaned up all of these threats, now I can attempt to win the game during main phase two. That's ingenious. I like that. Um, this does give you, also I mean like you make an argument between one to two Argent Chaos Force. I've seen some builds starting to push two now. So that's interesting to see. And then we have what is the Labyrinth Fiendsmith Ubel Toolbox. Holy crap, I mean, you've stripped down that Labyrinth package to one welcome, two big welcomes. Your Fiendsmith package is still doing the triple with the one Tractus with the one Lurie. So you've got the five card splash package built into the main deck. And because, uh, you know, we get to see how fun the U-Bell stuff is, you also get access to the triple throne, the one U-Bell and the one Spirit of U-Bell. I guess technically we have the terraforming in the main deck too because making that Spirit of U-Bell or that Phantom of U-Bell is just so stupid. And that actually just makes sure that, you know, your uh, your cards are able to resolve so you can do full Labyrinth combo and start scraping away your opponent's hand. Isn't it amazing just to see the levels of degeneracy that this combo is able to bring to the table? Ah, you gotta love it. Fiendsmith and all of this splash stuff. Next up down here, we actually have the Chimera Good Stuff pile. Uh, and this is basically um, with the Fiendsmith package built into it as well. You do see that our friend Dampier Vampire is seeing some love down here. Been a little bit since we've seen that. Uh, this build is also maximizing on the Triple Nightmare Apprentice as well. Unfortunately, I think a lot of um, the more recent day chimera builds do want to play that card i know i know it's it's big old scary 
um, and very expensive. Uh, you also do see the One Dia Blaze in here as well. Okay, okay, I see you. Uh, down in the side deck, you do see the rise to full heights, and you also notice one of the few little monsters from the Exodia deck seeing some play in the spotlight down here. And of course, maximizing on triple change of heart. Holy crap. They wanted to be able to control the meta, and they did it very, very strongly. Okay. Next up is Fiendsmith Magical Musketeers. This is one of the only few decks in the game that can basically go toggle a Link 1 onto a Link 1. Because uh, you can just go, you know, normal summon, go into Magical Musketeer combo, and then when you're done with your Magical Musketeer combo, convert that on into full Fiendsmith combo. It's so crazy that you're able to do that, but it's it's hilarious. I also do see that we're playing that trap card in here that basically locks you out of, you know, the fire, water, dark hand traps, um, which doesn't really matter in this particular deck because your purpose is to, you know, gas, gas through your opponent's combo line and not really care as much. So I will say it is very interesting to actually see, you know, Fiendsmith Magical Musketeer being one of these decks. Also still only playing two last resort and you have the double needle dance in here as well. And we are doing the Curry Photon down there as well. Yeah, that card's been getting some massive, massive play. All right, we have Runic over here. Now Runic Innovations aren't the greatest in the OCG. They've adapted towards playing Kaiser Coliseum because basically being able to play the Kaiser Coliseum and grind your opponent to an absolute slow halt is probably one of the most disrespectful things that you can do. You also do have the double sinker zone in here. We also see a Paradox Fusion down there in the side deck as well. Um, that's something that we've seen a little bit of. Um, not a huge amount, but okay. The rest of this is very standard, though, for the OCG take. And then we have Drytron. Uh, you do see we're just doing the two Ben 10. And then, of course, that's uh, this build's not even dedicating slots to the bigger Drytron boss monster, which I figured that they would be doing. You do see that we are playing a Ghost Trick shot in here. I don't think that this is necessarily the greatest representation of this deck because, you know, having the duo boss monster is very good, but this does give you a little bit of an idea of kind of how things are going. So, as your rogue section for the OCG, what do you guys think? Please, so comment down below, tell me what you guys think, and I'll see your beautiful faces back in the day, guys. Peace. Patrons, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.